This is Windy Impenetrable Forest, one of Africa's most famous national parks and the home of half of the population of the endangered mountain gorilla. Tracking gorilla is very regulated here in Uganda to protect them. Only eight people are allowed to visit a gorilla group a day, but I'm lucky today because I'm going to visit the gorillas all by my own. Deep in the midst in the heart of the dense Ugandan forest lives the largest of the living primates, the mountain gorilla, this endangered species who has lived peacefully in this habitat for thousands of years was not even known to science until early in the 20th century. My fascination for this gentle creature took me to the depths of Uganda's windy impenetrable forest, which is the home of half of the world's population of the mountain gorillas. In recent years, these beautiful animals have been threatened by poaching, disease, and the destruction of their habitat. They had died very much because people used it to kill them in need of their fingers, uh, feet, to put them in their houses for decoration. In Uganda, the Gorilla Tourism Program started in 1993 and it has become essential for the Ugandan economy. Now, because of the conservation, the population is uh, growing again. And according to last 10 years, they increased by 17%. Because the tourism revenue has directly contributed to the development of surrounding communities, the locals have learned to appreciate the mountain gorillas. Important to the country economy, as well as people li uh, living in Uganda, they get employment, uh, they get friendship with the outside the people. Before a trek, a ranger of the Uganda Wildlife Authority lists the rules to follow, and these are strictly enforced. Number one, you must maintain a distance of seven meters from the gorillas. They are related to humans with 98.4% genetically. So that makes the gorillas vulnerable to human diseases and vice versa. However, the gorillas don't have the immune system to resist our diseases. A visitor who displays signs of any illness won't be allowed to track the gorillas and the money will be refunded. Also, while in the presence of the mountain gorillas, you cannot drink, eat, speak loudly or make sudden movements. Everyone who comes here dreams of seeing the mountain gorillas, but these beautiful animals are free in the forest so there is never a 100% guarantee that you will encounter a gorilla. Gorilla tracking means that you have to start from where the gorillas were yesterday. You follow them up and here you reach where they are today. It may take one hour, it may take four hours, it may take the whole day. It is time to go gorilla tracking. Only eight people are allowed to visit a gorilla family daily. I was assigned to the Mubare family. And this is the first group to be habituated in Bwindi. It was habituated in 1991. So since 1991, this group has been seeing people up to now. But my luck didn't end there. My journey is going to be one of a kind. I am extremely lucky because uh, there are several groups trying to see the gorillas and it was only me in this group. And this is my Ugandan entourage, my guy David, whose last name happened to be Bone on the Road, Sion, my porter, and two armed rangers. With radio in hand, David is in constant communication with two other park rangers who are ahead of us, guiding us on which route to take. This is a taxing journey. There is no path to follow. The ranger with a machete clear a path for us through the thick vegetation. At this moment, I realized how this area came to be known as the impenetrable forest. Sometimes it's so steep that it was like rock climbing but covered with wet vegetation and mud. We have to use our legs, arms, trees, and everything in between to get to the summit. Yet the thought of seeing the gorillas is enough motivation to keep me going. You are physically fit. I'm happy for that because this mountain is very steep. For the rest of the people whom you saw there, yeah. if they came here, they would not see the gorillas. 
the reason why I chose uh, Windy was because um, it was the impenetrable forest and is the most challenging. So I thought that this was going to be a very rewarding experience and we're going to see probably very soon the gorillas. So let's continue. Suddenly David stopped to show me a gorilla nest and fresh gorilla poo. This is a good sign. We are on the right track. At that point, my entourage was left behind. Moving forward is only David, a ranger, and myself. In the darkness and haze of the forest, we meet Rujondesa, the silverback, and the leader and guardian of this gorilla group. Hidden behind trees, Rujondesa appears very sleepy and does justice to his name, which means the sleepy one. He softly opens his eyes to check what is going on and seems completely undisturbed by our presence. David tells me to follow him so we can meet the rest of the Mubari. And we find playful Canyoni, a black bag completely captivated by the leaves of a tree. This robust animal with long and muscular arms is actually an herbivore. The adult males or black bags can eat up to 35 kilograms of vegetation a day. Canyoni is so focused on his meal, he wouldn't even look at us. And David tells me to speak gorilla. <laughs> I think he's not paying attention to my sound. <laughs> I don't think I'm that good with the gorilla sound. I failed to get his attention, and we continue our search for the rest of the family. Among trees, we encounter Kashundwe, a female gorilla, nurturing her one-month-old baby. Kashundwe holds a tiny hairy baby in her arms. It looked like a human infant. The same sigh, the same awkward moves, crunching his minuscule hairy head against his mom's bushy belly. He was so little and vulnerable. I cannot control the tears as I film. I cry because seeing the baby gorilla is a sign of hope for an endangered species. I cry because I was moved by the motherly love of Kanshundwe. I thought I had already experienced the best of my gorilla adventure, but then suddenly out of the bushes, Mujambi, mm. A black bag gorilla comes out and moves quickly towards me. We are face to face, less than a meter away. I remember the seven meters rule, but this is their home and they don't follow human rules. We are just visitors. But moving or running was not an option as it could be very dangerous. I embrace the moment, staying calm, dropping my video camera, pretending to be a gorilla by scratching my messy hair and ribs in my best impersonation of Diane Fossey. Mujambi's big nostrils seems to be trying to decipher what the hell I was. And suddenly, his tiny brown eyes look at me with tenderness. He was a wild animal, yet so human. He sat comfortably nearby me. His black hair was thick and long. The mountain gorilla has a very thick coat of hair to protect them from the cold climate of high elevation. In fact, it is the hairiest species of all the gorillas. As I stare at Munjambi, Rujondesa, the silverback, passes by us, showing his silvery gray saddle. Canyoni and Munjambi follow their leader. An hour has passed and we have to say bye to the Mubare family. Restricting the time with the gorillas to one hour is important in order not to cause them distress, disturb their routine and prevent them from mating. The way back to the camp isn't any less challenging than to the way up. But I am leaving the forest feeling privileged to have seen firsthand what makes this mystic creature so unique. Visiting the mountain gorillas in their home, being embraced by them, looking at them free in the wild and growing in number is without any doubt 
the most extraordinary experience I have had in all my years of traveling.